What's happening, Cross Point? Mr. Kendall again, Bike Dojo, here to read you another story. Today's story is part of the Walter the Farting Dog series. This is a book called Rough Weather Ahead for Walter the Farting Dog. Professor Compressor knocked on the door. I understand your dog has a farting disorder. It's not a disorder, said Betty and Billy. Yes, it is, shouted Father. You come on in. Professor Compressor said, I made a lifelong study of animal gas. He examined Walter, gently poking around his stomach. You better be careful, said Father. He farts when you do that. He won't fart at me, will you, Walter? And Walter farted. Professor Compressor staggered backward, waving his gas meter. 10.7, the highest I've ever recorded. What a remarkable animal. Walter was pleased to be called remarkable. He liked Professor Compressor and licked his hand. You're a good boy, Walter, said Compressor, Professor Compressor. And I'm going to help you. He poked around some more. It's his digestion that caused such powerful farts. We don't mind, said Betty and Billy. Well, yeah, we do, said Mother. Years of research has led me to this special formula, said Professor Compressor. Powders and potions appeared from his pockets. He plugged in the gleaming machine, mixed it in my compressed the natron, and served it fresh three times a day. We're so grateful, said Mother. So three times a day, Mother mixed a special formula in the Compressatron. His farts aren't as bad, said Billy hopefully. They're worse than ever, said his father. Your father's right, said Mother. That night, Father decided to mix the formula himself. He examined the powders carefully. More of this, he decided, less of this, and a lot more of that. He sniffed the new mixture and smiled. That's better. Tastes pretty good, said Walter to himself, and he ate it faithfully every day. It's working, cried Mother. The air smells so fresh. Hooray, said Betty. Walter was pleased too, and everyone was smiling. No one ran away when he came home in the room. Further, Father even hugged him. However, inside Walter, gas was building up slowly. Uh-oh. That dog is getting fat, said Father. But it wasn't, just, it wasn't fat, it was farts, waiting to be set free. Professor Compressor's mixture and father's expert touch were turning Walter into a blimp. Walter began taking strange little bounces when he walked across the room. One evening, he floated over his father's chair. Great jump, Walter, said Billy. But it wasn't a jump. It was his gas. The following evening, Billy and Betty were in their room doing homework. Billy, said Betty, look outside. Betty and Billy raced out of the house. Walter was floating over the trees. Walter, come down, cried Betty. But Walter couldn't come down. He floated on into town. Quite a view, he said to himself. A breeze came up and blew him over in the other end of town. This is getting serious, said Walter. Runaway farting dog. He knew the problem was gas. He knew his solution was farting. He squeezed. He pressed his belly with his paws. He twisted into a knot. Nothing. He floated all night long. When morning came, it was high above the world. Mommy, said the little girl. Look at that balloon. It's lost, said the little girl's mother. It will never come back. Uh-oh. Walter floated for days. He floated over green hills and blue rivers. He flew over skyscrapers and farms. He floated in the dark and in the rain. He felt so lonely and so cold. He went whichever way the wind carried him. Suddenly the wind grew much stronger and he wasn't alone any longer. The air around him was filled with a flutter of tiny frozen wings. Millions of butterflies were caught in a freezing windstorm. They'd been on their way to their winter home when the storm took them by surprise. 
Poor butterflies, Walter said to himself. The wind was driving them down towards the frozen lake below. I've got to help them, thought Walter. He knew he had it in him. He could just get it out. He grunted, he groaned, he pressed. He looked into their tiny insect faces. It was now or never. Dun, dun, dun. Just then, he let it rip. A blast of warm gas lifted the butterflies out of their dive. It melted the ice on their wings and carried them to the far side of a mountain where the sun was always shining. They touched down a field of wildflowers. A forest ranger in his tower grabbed the two-way radio. I think those butterflies are going to be okay. However, at a gas, Walter went down like a rocket. He splashed into a pond and doggy paddled to the shore. He shook himself dry, then he sniffed the air, turned around, and started the long walk home. He'd only gone a little way when the ranger pulled up in his jeep. Can I give you a lift, Wonder Dog? Somebody sent us a big package, said Mother, looking out the window. It's not a package, cried Billy. It's Walter. See, said Father, I told you he's going to find his way home. Oh, Walter, said Betty. We're so glad you're back. Not as, as half as glad as we are, said the delivery men. And here's where he won an award for winning this, the nicest dog ever, saving all the butterflies around. Walter the farting dog. Rough weather ahead. Glad you liked it. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye-bye. Yes, I wanted to show you my farting dog, Fonzie.